Hello and welcome to What the Fort. Something a bit different today, we're going to do a series of videos on the finds that archaeologists recover from sites. Today we're going to look at pottery. Pottery is commonly discovered on most archaeology sites and it can help us date the site itself. Today we're going to find out how we know where pottery comes from, how it's made and the different types of pottery. The earliest pottery in Britain was made in the Neolithic period around about 6,000 years ago and it's been used ever since for the transportation, storage, preparation and serving of food and drink and for many other uses. The earliest types of pottery were hand built and these were made using pinch and coil techniques and would have been fired in a small bonfire kiln. Wheel thrown techniques were introduced in the early Roman period and by the post medieval period pottery production was a huge industrial industry with large kilns. To make pottery you need a good source of clay, water and fuel for the kiln. Pottery has been decorated in many different ways and the earliest most primitive pots were decorated with thumb and finger impressions, incised rope lines and also using implements of bone and wood. Glazing became commonplace in the medieval period and by the post medieval period even more complex designs and glazes were used. In the 18th century, transfer print was invented where whole scenes could be placed on the pot before the final firing. Let's take a look at some of the pottery found in the southwest. Here are some of the types of Roman pottery found in Britain. We have Samian ware, which was first brought over by the Roman army. This was made in South Gaul, where southern France is today. Some of the pots have decorations of medallions and creatures and even gladiators on them and these were made using a mould. We have a small piece of local made pottery and this is grey ware, it's probably made in Devon. This piece is a piece of mortarium which would have been a bowl used for grinding small amounts of grain and herbs and spices in a kitchen. You can see the grits which have been inlaid in the internal part of the pot for helping with the grinding process. Here we have some pottery commonly found in the southwest. We can tell where the pottery comes from by looking at the inclusions or the small pieces of stone or shell sometimes included in the pot. This piece of pottery is a piece of cooking vessel and you can tell this because it has a sooted base. So it's been placed over the fire. We can tell that it comes from East Devon because it has these pieces of chert in the pottery mixture. These were added in to help with the firing process. We can tell that this piece of pottery, which is the start of a piece of a handle, came from Devon too because it has shiny pieces of mica in it and this was in the clay and was washed down from granite, so it's possibly from the Totnes area. We also have pottery from further afield. This is a piece of Santonge, it's, which is from France and it is a medieval jug handle. You can see the clay is a lot lighter than the clays from Britain, so we can tell that that's where it comes from. These other pieces of medieval jug fragments have a glaze, and the glaze most commonly used in the medieval period is a rich green glaze. In the post-medieval period, from around about 1600 to 1800, there was a huge flood of imported pottery into Britain. Many of the common pieces were from the area that is now known as Germany, and these are salt glazed stoneware pieces. This is a piece of Frecken pottery, and it's fired at a much higher temperature than we knew how to fire pottery in this country. We also have a Vestervold, piece here and here. These are very characteristically blue and grey and would have formed chamber pots, tankards and other vessels. The other imported pottery we have here is from a mixture of different places. 
we have this wonderful piece of platter which is from Italy which is around about 1500 AD and is called Montelupo ware. We also have pieces of tin glaze. Tin glaze came from many different locations including Portugal, Italy and Spain. And we also have a piece of porcelain which may well have come from China but we also started to make our own porcelain so it may be a British porcelain piece. Here we have pottery from the last two to three hundred years. We have locally made uh, scraffito ware pottery where they would have scratched through the decoration to make very impressive plates and dishes. We have a large platter of Bristol Staffordshire ware pressed plate and I always think the decoration looks like Bakewell tart and this was applied with an iron wash. We have a piece of chamber pot, which was probably South Somerset or North Devon ware. It has a flat rim, so you could have sat on, and this would have been placed under the bed. If you were posh enough, this would have been emptied by a servant, usually out the window. If not, you would have had to have emptied it yourself. We also have more recent willow pattern pottery, and this is an example of transfer print made in Staffordshire. The story of this pottery is that when the finer porcelains were coming over from China, the working classes wanted to emulate this pottery. So willow pattern was made so that the working classes could all have a slice of this pottery. The story on the pot is of two lovers that were not allowed to be together and ended up turning into swallows. There is also lots of other Chinese iconography on this pottery. We have a piece of colander, so before stainless steel was invented, colanders were made of pottery and you can see the holes for straining things in the kitchen. And the last piece we have is an inkwell. This is made of stoneware pottery and it was damaged during excavation, but this means you can see the cross section. This would have been filled with ink and a quill placed in for writing. Thanks for watching and if you've enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope to see you soon!